The Great Orion Nebula. Welcome to Stargazers. I'm Dean Regis, astronomer from the Cincinnati Observatory. And I'm James Albury, director of the Kika Silva Pla Planetarium in Gainesville, Florida. We're here to help you find your way around the sky. One of the best things about winter is that it always brings the return of one of the true wonders of the universe. That wouldn't be snow, would it? No, not quite, James, but it's something that is very easy to spot in the winter sky, an object in deep space. Sweet. Let's show you. We have our skies set up for any night this week at about 7.30 p.m. In the southeast, you'll see what has to be the second most familiar pattern of stars, after the Big Dipper, that is. A pattern which is loaded with bright stars known as Orion the Hunter. To best find him, look for his belt of three stars in a row. These are the stars Alnitak, Alnalam, and Mintaka. Above these three belt stars, you'll see two brilliant stars marking Orion's shoulders, Bellatrix and Betelgeuse. And below his belt, two other stars mark his ankle and his knee, Rigel and Safe. We often talk about Orion's bright stars, but for this episode, we would like to zero in on one of Orion's more subtle objects. Look below the belt stars for three much dimmer stars, the stars we call the Sword of Orion. There, we will find one of the most awesome wonders of our nearby universe. If you look very carefully at these three stars, you'll notice that no matter how sharp your eyesight, the middle star always seems to look fuzzy or slightly out of focus. And that's because this star is not a star at all, but something we call a nebula. A nebula is a cosmic cloud of gas and dust, and the Great Nebula of Orion is actually a stellar recycling center. Within this nebula, brand new stars have been and are still being born from the surrounding cloud. In fact, you can see this nebula using even the cheapest pair of binoculars. This cloud is illuminated by four recently born stars arranged in the shape of a baseball diamond called the trapezium. And these four stars can actually be seen with a small telescope. Now, although the Orion Nebula looks tiny, in reality, its size is mind boggling. Believe it or not, there is enough material in this nebula to produce over 10,000 stars the size of our sun. But if you really want to be impressed, check out the width of the Orion Nebula. As nebulae go, this one is gigantic, spanning over 30 light years in diameter. A light year is not a measure of time, but a measure of distance. Space is so big and the stars are so far away that we astronomers don't measure the distances between the stars in terrestrial units like miles or kilometers. We use the term light year. Light travels at a whopping 186,000 miles per second, which is almost 670 million miles per hour. This means that if you were to travel at the speed of light from the Earth to the moon, you could make the trip in a little less than two seconds. If you traveled from the Earth to the Sun at the same speed, you could make the trip in a little over eight minutes. And if you were to travel from Earth to Pluto at the speed of light, you could make the trip in a little over five hours. So we're going to fly you through the Orion Nebula and take a closer look at this star factory. The force of gravity is bringing clouds of gases together, and when they begin fusing elements, bang, a star is born. Modern telescopes have allowed us to look deep inside the nebula and see newborn stars and disks of material. These disks could be forming planets like those in our solar system. It could take thousands or even millions of years for these protoplanetary disks to turn into solar systems. But we'll keep watching. And you should too. Look for the Orion Nebula this week and peer deep into space. It's all there when you keep, keep looking, looking up. up.